Primary Weapon Systems is a premium AR manufacturer who specializes in a long stroke gas piston designed AR. They're based out of Boise, Idaho, and they make an absolutely fantastic, well-built rifle. This rifle, as you see here, this is going to be the PWS, or Primary Weapon Systems Mark 114 Mod 1. So for the record, out of their lineup that they have, this is actually going to be more of like their entry level. Primary Weapon Systems rifles in general, they start to get a little bit on the expensive side for the average person. So a lot of times what you're gonna see is they are $2,000 plus. This rifle as it sits here, minus the optic and riser on here, is gonna be somewhere closer to about the $1,700 range. So it's a little bit more reasonable and I think it's a more obtainable price for a gas piston designed AR-15 platform rifle. Let's go into all the features and we'll talk a little bit about the long stroke piston design for those that don't know. The rifle itself, this is gonna be a 14 and a half inch pinned and welded 16 inch overall length. So this does have PWS's comp up here on the front. It's very good at mitigating blast and recoil. Uh, I've used this comp in the past on other rifles, not on PWS stuff, and is very effective and does a really good job. However, it is pinned and welded. The barrel on here, 14 and a half inch. It's a good overall profile. I like the fact that it's not a pencil thin barrel. It's more like a medium weight and some will even like say more like that Hanson that some people like to call. Handguard up here on the front, it's gonna be a free float handguard that actually clamps on on three separate sections. It is M-lock all the way across at three, six and nine o'clock positions. Across the top, you have Picatinny that goes down the rail and there's an interrupted section near the end, but you could still fit a front iron sight if you wanted to. The interrupted section, that is for the actual gas port or gas adjustment. The gas adjustment on here has three positions, one, two, and three, and you can set that for whatever you may be doing. If you need it to run in more adverse conditions, you're gonna allow more gas into the rifle to ultimately cycle that bolt. Or you can restrict it if you don't need to. Let's say you need to restrict it because you're running a suppressor on the rifle or something like that. You don't need as much because of that backflow that you're gonna get that will actually force that. So they have that. On the rear of the rifle, this does feature an H2 buffer system. The H2 system helps the rifle shoot flat. I have not shot it yet, but in theory, H2 systems, generally speaking, when gassed properly, will shoot very, very flat in conjunction with the gas system, the weight, and your muzzle device. Now, on the rear is PWS's own buffer tube. These are very nice, they're very well regarded. They're almost like fluted in some way, shape, or form. However, what's nice about them is that they're very well machined, very smooth, honed, and has a very nice finish on here. Now, PWS also has a ratcheting castle nut. Some folks don't like them. However, I think it's a phenomenal design and almost, let's say, a little bit of a separation from what a lot of folks would do with just staking it. And they came out with that ratcheting castle nut. There's a QD socket on the rear of the rifle. And then here on the back, you're gonna have Bravo Company furniture on here. So this is their gunfighter grip and the Bravo Company stock. This Bravo Company stock, I've run one of these for a long time. I had one on the duty rifle before I recently went to the B5 stuff. And I really like these, these are super nice. Um, if you're talking about gross motor skills and things like that, you don't have that issue with the stock because you just simply grip it with a full hand and move it back and forth on this six position buffer tube here. Now. Safety and trigger. The safety is a standard mil spec single sided right handed shooter safety. I wish it had an ambi safety, especially for the price of this rifle. I think it should. However, it's positive and has a good detent in it. Now, the trigger was a mil spec enhanced or mil spec plus trigger, as they claimed, and uh, more like the Hammer of Thor with a two stage in it. So it was very heavy in my opinion, and especially the fact that it was a polished nickel Teflon type trigger. It was not light. It was heavy, uh, really more like around the six and a half to seven pound range, which if you get a, a well-made mil spec trigger, they will shoot that and there's no creep. That one had like a two stage, so basically a first stage you pulled through and you never hit a defined wall and then it didn't break crisper clean. So what we've done is there was an excellent sale on primary arms for the G2S trigger from Geisley. We replaced that and it was literally $90 to replace a trigger in this. So with the Geisley G2S trigger, if you're not familiar, two stage trigger, with a very clean defined wall that usually breaks about four pounds. So the rifle, they'll have a two and a half pound or two pound take up and a two and a half pound to two pound pull weight. Easy trigger job, something very easy to change. Controls on here for your magazine release, it's just gonna be a single sided right-handed shooter's magazine release. No ambi controls on this model in comparison to the other PWS rifles out there. Now the bolt. The bolt itself, that's where you really get into the differences compared to a standard DI gun or direct impingement gun. The bolt itself has a long piston that runs all the way from the front of the rifle 
all the way to the rear, which is very similar to how an AK actually functions and the piston design that it is in there. But there's a standard, let's say similar standard, AR bolt carrier group in here, which we will show you here in a second. But in order to operate all that, you have a Radian charging handle here on the rear, which is the Radian Raptor LT, and it is branded with PWS's symbol. So give me one second here, I'll break this thing down and show you guys that bolt carrier group. Now that I have the rifle apart, we'll talk a little bit about the bolt carrier group itself. Uh, the bolt carrier group, if you're not familiar with the standard DI gun versus piston and the long stroke piston design here, for those that don't know, you have a gas tube that runs back into the chamber. That gas tube actually ports gas back to the carrier, pushes the carrier back, and the bolt carrier group itself back into the buffer system comes back and locks back up. This does not have a gas tube. The best way I could oversimplify it for you is like as if the gas tube itself is attached to the carrier key and onto the bolt carrier group as one unit. Now, the charging handle, I'd already taken it off. However, it actually slides onto here and you have to assemble the rifle with this attached to it and put it back into the rifle. You could take this apart, it's simple to do. Um, really overall though, the, the benefits behind a piston design gun or piston design in general is that it's a cleaner operating system because you're not getting all that exhaust gas ultimately coming back into the rifle and dirtying your action. So in time and heat dissipation, you're not getting all that crap coming back into the action, dirtying your bolt, dirtying the carrier and dirtying your entire chamber here of the AR platform. Now, we all know that the modern AR-15 with good components lubed properly is very, very effective at being reliable. The piston design came out to be a combat to ultimately unreliable AR-15s because they would get dirty and become unreliable. So this definitely fixes that issue of having all that carbon gas coming back into the gun and dirtying the action and ultimately slowing down your action. So in theory, this rifle or piston guns in general should be more reliable under sustained fire and in more adverse conditions because you can adjust that gas system to different gas settings. The carrier key itself is actually staked on here. The staking job does look good. Uh, finish on here is similar to like a black nitride. It's very nice, it's smooth. Um, outside of that, everything else is pretty much the same. Taking the bolt down itself, cleaning the bolt and doing all that is the same. Now you will notice here on the bolt, it has a spring action to it and that's because there's actually a small spring in there because your action and how it works is different than a DI gun. One last thing I do want to talk about with the rifle, and I noticed it before shooting it and taking it apart and things like that. The bottom lug on this rifle, when you move this rifle, you're taking it apart, you have to be very careful because that lug, when it comes down, it actually impacts the lower receiver of the AR-15. So with that happening, you can actually mar up and jack up your finish on the bottom of that lug. Uh, that's uncommon. That's frankly the first time I've ever seen that on a handguard itself. However, it will be okay. It's just something to take note of if you're taking this rifle down or taking it apart because you will end up marring up and actually damaging that lower lug on your handguard. So enough talking about this thing inside. Let's go out and shoot it on the range. On the range now with the PWS Mark 114 Mod 1. Uh, we have several hundred rounds loaded up in several magazines. I'm gonna start this off though by tuning the gas system. It has three settings. Right now it's on setting number one and we'll see which one ultimately I seem to like the most at a recoil impulse and how it's running. It's one. The gas system itself is very easy to tune because it's actually just a little uh, let's say fitting up here on the front, and you can actually change it with a bullet. That's two now. So you'll see malfunction. Let's see if it's gonna function on that. So that actually doesn't have on two there, you'll see that actually doesn't have enough juice to ultimately cycle the bolt completely. So we'll go to three and see how it is, if it, see if it functions at all, just so you guys can see. So that's three. The ammo we're shooting today, this is gonna be uh, federal. So shoot soft on that, however, 
as you can see, the rifle will not function on two and three. With Federal, this is gonna be 223 ball ammunition. So we're gonna go back to one. So good lock back, good ejection pattern there on setting one. So setting one, again, we have some federal today. After we run through this stuff, I have Fioki 223. Um, it's ammunition and DI guns always seems to run reliable. Also, in addition to that, cheapest that we can find. As you know, sometimes the market for AR ammunition isn't the easiest. Magazines today, a lot of stuff we're gonna run is some stuff that KCI sent out to us. They're KCI windowed magazines. They're very similar to PMAGs, except a lot cheaper. Quality-wise, they seem good so far. Again, we're just testing these out. They sent these to us with zero expectations. We'll try them out and see how they function. Now I get this thing tuned. Let's start this off with a build drill. So 187. All good A-zone hits. Um, in fact, I was a little slow and fumbled with the safety. Um, if you guys aren't familiar or you haven't watched the channel recently, a lot of the safeties I've been shooting, and of course, on my own personal duty rifle, I do run either a 45, 50, or a 70 degree throw. And the safety on this is just a standard mil spec safety. There's nothing wrong with it. Mil spec safeties though, you have to be familiar with them. Um, you can use them. And even then, you figure I did a build drill with all A-zone hits pretty much in the heart at a 187. So the rifle shoots very flat and it's very easy to shoot. We'll try it one more time. So 147 on that, again, all A-zone. This rifle is very flat. So that's two to the chest and one to the head and a 136. Yeah, this rifle, it shoots really well. Uh, the biggest thing I can tell you is that if you were to get one of these, I would definitely recommend changing out that trigger. I, you don't have to, it would be usable. However, the guys, the G2S trigger is a fantastic trigger. Uh, especially if you could pick one up for the price that we did, highly recommend it. Let's do some from the high ready. How many rounds we got here? So like about six maybe, so let's see. High ready again to empty it out and we'll go into a reload. So I got three rounds total and I will go into a reload when I go empty. So three rounds, reload, three rounds. Yeah, what I can say is that the rifle is just a really flat shooting rifle. I mean, I think that that should be readily apparent on camera. What's pretty crazy to see too is right now, you know, I've fired about 60 rounds through the gun. Overall, you know, ejections are all good. You see the smoking a little bit, a little bit getting a little bit warm on it. Um, hand guard though, for my hand being up there, I'm wearing gloves today, it's cold, it's about 35 degrees. It's not getting hot really. You know, obviously the, the gun's heating up and that piston system, how it operates, gets hot on the front end. A lot of times that's how they work, but it's not bad. This rifle is just very flat shooting um, and it's just a really nice rifle. Next set of testing here, um, just gonna run the rifle a little bit, transition between targets. However, Lancer mag, loaded up here and then I also have a P-Mag loaded up. Of course, Lancer mags and your P-Mags are your most popular. Then those KCI mags are gonna be something, like I said, we're just trying. They're working out wonderful though for range mags, especially for as much shooting as we do for these reviews.
Something to mention for you guys um, is that with this rifle, and obviously it being a gas piston design or long strip piston design, is that it is very soft shooting. And in fact, because it's very soft shooting, it's very easy to keep on target. We're at about 25 yards now on steel. And for me to transition and hit steel, and make double taps and things like that, it's really just not hard to do. It's very easy. Now, it's not all that hard to hit those at, at, at that distance either, but the rifle doesn't move. It's very simple to do. And at the price point that the Mark 114 Mod 1 comes in at, it's a very affordable way to get into a long stroke gas piston design make a good suppressor host or whatever you might need it for and not break the bank. Now, obviously some of your short strokes and the other long strokes that are out there, they're very expensive. There are a lot of times well over $2,000. You look at like the SIG, um, MCX Spear and some of those super expensive. This maintain a standard AR platform, all standard AR lower controls. And on top of that, stay below $2,000. Shoot it a bit more here. That's it, a little bit of trigger freeze upon my part there after reloading, it happens. Um, when you're training, you work that type of stuff out of there. But however, the primary weapon systems, Mark 114 Mod 1, chambered in 223 Wild, is a fantastic rifle. I think if you're looking for a rifle with a long stroke piston design or a piston rifle, this one could be for you, especially just to even get into that game. However, it's an awesome rifle in general. This thing definitely competes with all the most popular DI guns on the market. It runs well, it shoots flat, it's gas perfectly with the H2 system, gas perfectly on that one setting, has the two and the three if you want to suppress it. And on top of all that, a good complete package from a very reputable manufacturer at PWS. But until next time guys, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and follow along with Hunt Fish Shoot.